As a kid growing up in New Zealand, my parents put me in cricket and soccer, but it wasn't until I sat in a sailing dinghy that I found out what I really wanted to do. That was where the dream started. That dream is still burning today. Meeting the perfect shipmate in Mongolia of all places, throwing in our jobs and security, and spending the last four years sailing on Lucky Fish has brought me closer to realising the dream. Equator! Yeah. But has it been worth the sacrifices? Looking back over all these amazing experiences, you'd expect we'd say an emphatic yes. Oh my god! But there is a surprising answer to that question. We'll never forget the last day as we approached Barbados. We'd just sailed 3,000 miles non-stop and spent 22 nights out of sight of land. Barbados was the end of our first ocean crossing. So many unknowns had been wiped away. What sticks in my mind is how easily an ocean leg begins by just weighing anchor and setting sail. It's just like a day sail, except this time you become a small white dot and disappear over the horizon. And just how easily an ocean crossing comes to an end. Firstly by dwindling to a short coastal sail, and finally extinguished by dropping anchor in a sheltered bay. The only barriers stopping us from going are psychological. And we create them entirely ourselves. When you start sailing in tiny dinghies, your dreams are realised when you go around a course without capsizing. Crossing an ocean is a very, very distant dream. So arriving in Barbados was a dream realised too, but just the start of more dreams for the Caribbean adventures that followed. Dreams of the headiest kind fueled by movies and music and books and history and customs and countless accounts of those that had been before. Tristan Jones did not need no one to see him again. Four thousand miles crisscrossing the Caribbean has only left us dreaming for more. First the Windward Islands and the discovery of Beckway, the spiritual home of so many sailors, and now ours too. Our first introduction to the impossible colours of the Tobago Keys, the magic of Salt Whistle Bay, carry a coup and the easy passages, reaching across the wind, going north or going south, sailing just for the sheer fun of it, and the chance to catch dinner too. Oi, tuna jumping, my god, oh my god! Once you're in the trade wind belt, it's just that, a conveyor belt circling the globe. We've hopped on and hopped off so many times now, letting the wind choose our destinations. When I think back to a place, it's the people who come to mind first. <laughs> Their smiles and stories, and just how much the same we all are. 
So we jumped on the chance to attend a meetup in Florida with other Warham catamaran sailors. A hooey. We sailed fast and rode the wind almost 2,000 miles, getting an all too brief taste of the Bahamas on the way, and promising ourselves to return. At the Hui we really did make friends for life, who steered our journey up rivers and into hidden places, safe from hurricanes and into one of Florida's wonderful backwaters. There we went to work on all the small improvements we'd been planning since leaving South Africa. Our amazing little catamaran that had looked after us so well now faced another challenge. To sail against the prevailing wind down to the Bahamas in time to meet our first guests of a new season. It was the first time we'd been on a schedule and the boat didn't let us down. For months we experienced possibly the finest cruising the Caribbean has to offer and shared it with patrons and kindred spirits wanting to experience life on board a Tiki 38. Only one big one. With the hurricane season fast approaching, we headed to the Rio Dulce, perhaps the only true hurricane hole in the Caribbean, and called into Cuba on the way down. Catching too many of them and I'm hot, <laughs> fighting with them, so I took all my clothes off. <laughs> if they say the journey is half the fun, then they must have been talking about journeys like these. We had pretty favourable winds for the entire 1200 miles, and the two week stop in Havana made us keen to see more of Cuba. Playing tactics with the Gulf Stream paid off, and we had a fairly easy sail down to the Rio, hooking a magnificent mahi on the way that fed us and new friends for a week. Well, we put the boat up on the hard stand here at Ram, and uh, we expect that the boat might be here for six months, possibly a year, while we go and get some work. So we're just running through the normal routine jobs that we do to put the boat to bed. So there it is, viewers. Four amazing years on Lucky Fish, following, no fulfilling our dreams. Has it lived up to expectations? No, it hasn't. It's gone way beyond them, it's changed us for the better and with it has come the contentment of a realised dream and the pursuit of more dreams. How can we ever put a price on that? Well, you know it and unfortunately we're forced to put a price on everything. What could we have done differently with less sacrifice and more security? Next week I'll be sharing with you my research into the current state of what I'm calling smart boat ownership. It's highly relevant to any of you planning to follow your dreams. Be sure to subscribe, don't miss it, and check out our channel for all the other videos. Thank you for watching and good luck with your dreams.